What's up, viewers, subscribers, and agents alike? It's your boy, Light Lucy Fair, and Prince coming at y'all once again. Still progressing, still maintaining. Hope everybody out there is safe. Hope everybody out there is enjoying themselves, maintaining amongst the chaos. Still living, still learning, still growing, not living in fear. Um, I'm doing this video because I, before I proceeded to where I wanted to go to next, a brother asked me uh, quite a while ago to do a video on a situation that happened, I think probably about close to about a month ago, if not so a month ago, on the situation that happened in uh, Massachusetts, I believe. And it was called The Rise of the Moors, right? Now, unfortunately, I'm going to give this information to y'all for information on educational purposes only. When it comes to the rise of the Moors, as far as the news is concerned, I'm going to give it to you from their approach first, and I'm going to give it to you from the historical approach first. But before we proceed, strap in and take notes. Here we go. Rise of the Moors. What to know about the group affiliated with 11 men arrested in Massachusetts. Members believe they are not subject to U.S. law, extremist watchdog says. Now, that's just one entity's viewpoint. Here we go. 11 people armed with long guns and dressed in tactical gear who claim to be a part of a group called Rise of the Moors were arrested following an hours-long week standoff, which was nine hours in the totality, with Massachusetts police over the weekend. Now, this happened July 10th, so it was, it was this month. So, police say they found heavily armed men in two vehicles near Interstate 95 around 1.30 a.m. on Saturday. A nine-hour standoff ensued before all 11 were arrested. Pretty creepy numbers, don't you think? Nine hours, 11 men. I mean, I ain't no conspiracy theorist, but that is kind of crazy. <laughs> but no one was harmed in the incident. The men arrested ranged in the ages from 17 to 40 and hailed from Rhode Island, New York, and Michigan. Two of the men refused to identify themselves, and the third is the 17-year-old whose name will not be released because he's a minor, police said. Police say they arrested, the arrested are Jamal Tavon Sanders Latimer, 29 of Providence, Rhode Island, Robert Rodriguez, 21 of the Bronx, New York, Wilfredo Hernandez, 21 of the Bronx, Alvin L. Carraw, 27 of the Bronx, Aaron Lamont Johnson, 29 of Detroit, Quint Cumberland, 40 of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, Lamar Dow, 34 of the Bronx, and Conrad Pierre, Baldwin, New York. No guilty pleas were entered on behalf of the defendants who are being with, held without bail pending a Friday hearing, the Associated Press reported. Massachusetts State Police Colonel Christopher Mason said that the men identified themselves as part of a group called Rise of the Moors and said they were traveling from Rhode Island to Maine for training. It was unclear what the training involved. According to the group's website, Rise of the Moors is a group of Moorish American, excuse me, Moorish American dedicated to educating new Moors and influencing our elders. The group is headquartered in Rhode Island. According to his website, the group did not respond to ABC News requests for comment. You don't have to. The website says that the Moors are not sovereign citizens, but argues that the Moors are original sovereigns of America and are therefore immune from U.S., capitalized U.S. law. Freddy Krueger is a research analyst at Sovereign Poverty Law Center who tracks anti-government groups. So you got to watch out for these groups like Southern Poverty Law Center and ACLU, NAACP. All these individual entities do not work for the interests of the people. So before y'all get caught up in the acronyms, just understand they do not have your best interest at hand. Believe what you want, but you'll find out the hard way. He said that the group draws much of their beliefs, inspirations from ancient civilizations, including ties to Aztecs, the Olmecs, and other indigenous people. They tend to reference all the past civilizations with the idea that they are somehow entitled to, or there is somehow a lineage there that affords them the right to essentially disassociate themselves from the U.S. government, Cruz says. Because they refuse to abide by the American law, Group members can end up in tense situations with police, Cruz says. So a lot of these groups don't register their firearms. They don't register their vehicles. That tends to be a recipe for disaster, especially if law enforcement is involved, because they tend to essentially become quite standoffish, he said. 
In the Massachusetts incident, police said that he asked the men for driver's licenses and gun licenses, but the men said they don't have any. The more sovereign citizen movement emerged in the early 1990s as an offshoot of the anti-government sovereign citizens movement, and more specifically, the Moore's Science Temple of America, which predated anything called the Southern Poverty Law Center or anything we know as the Associated Press or anything associated with just, you know, the American Civil Liberties Union whatsoever. Any entity constructed <laughs> prior to 1913 is basically my point. So here we go. The Moore Science Temple of America was created in 1913, but not all Moore Science Temple of America are linked to sovereign citizens, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. According to the Moore Science Temple of America's website, the temple is a divine and national movement that teaches about Moore's identity, which there, under definition, means what they call Black Americans. They practice Islam and denounce the sovereign citizens movement and identify as U.S. citizens. ABC News has reached out to Moore Science Temple of America for comment. Some Moore's sovereigns believe that a 1787 treaty between the U.S. and Morocco a claim that Southern Poverty Law Center says is fictitious, just as fictitious as we can call a constitution, but this is what they say. Grants them immunity from U.S. law, the center reported. Some groups create their own birth certificates, passports, driver's licenses, and vehicle registrations, according to Southern Poverty Law Center. This perceived immunity from local authority is used to justify the refuse to pay in taxes, buy car insurance, register vehicles, and what they say, defraud banks. How could you defraud the fraudster? You put that together. The center reported, the movement has no unified leadership, never has, and consists of small groups, most of which operate in Southeast, Northeast, and Midwest. Despite experts classifying the group as sovereign citizens and anti-government, Colonel Mason said that the self-professed leader of the group, the 11 men arrested, wanted it very much known that their ideology is not anti-government. He noted that he can't confirm that they are validated members of the group. Southern Poverty Law Center officially listed Rise of the Moors as anti-government organization in 2020. Cruz said that the center has counted so far six organizations that are classified as Moors sovereign anti-government groups across the country. Ken Gray, a retired FBI special agent, which is the one that was actually on the news story, and professor of criminal justice at the University of New Haven, told ABC that sovereign citizens tend to be more of a law enforcement nuisance than they seem to be a violent group. They seem to be much more involved in tying people up in legal problems, making false claims on property, and not paying taxes. This group here says they were going on to conduct training and were outfitted in camouflage clothing, carrying body armor, and had long guns with them. But that does not necessarily mean that they were planning to do something violent. It could very well mean that they were training for likely for defensive purposes, he added. I'm not going to go any further because the rhetoric from that newspaper totally makes my head hurt. Here it is from the standpoint of the conscientious objector. Let me tell you something, people. I don't care what you call yourself as far as your designation is concerned. There is no such thing as a sovereign citizen in this country. No such thing. You're either one or the other. The thing that these people do is they collude the two together to make you confused, to as you make you think that you are some anti-government group. Government is conscience. It is not something written on a piece of paper to say, particularly, this is what it is. The DC Corporation is a privatized organization located in Washington, DC. That is the, their government. That is the establishment of their government. Any state outside of that resides as an individual sovereign state. The state can only gain its sovereignty by the populace of people. How do they get this mixed up? I do not know. The reason why they do it is because they do not want you to determine yourself. See, when you start determining yourself and you start making yourself more known prevalently by legal maneuvers that they will often use against you, now it's a problem. You see what I'm saying? See, you have to understand that whatever these 11 men were up to in regards to their personal right, you notice that not one shot was fired in regards to defense because if they were anti-government, hell, it could have been Ruby Ridge. You know what I'm saying? And we all know who the terrorists were that incited that whole operation. But it, it kills me in this country they're just landmass, I should say, more or less, that when we start to become more self-proficient and, and, and self-determined, we're a threat. But it's all right that we go along with the agenda. It's all right that we listen to music that makes us kill ourselves. It's all right if we take drugs. 
It's all right that we just go ahead and be promiscuous. It's all right that we go to jail. All of these things are fine. You know, these are generational equalizers. You know, these are tactics and maneuvers used by the pirating occupying force. However, when you start to become more educated, when you're actually practicing peaceful legal maneuvers, when you're actually practicing the things that keep these entities out of your personal business, your problem. You see what I'm saying? See, when it comes down to correction of status and letting these people know who you are, notice that they said there are groups that are not tied. So that means that these are people who basically practice self-determination. You see what I'm saying? See, they labeled them anti-government, even though they are not. See what I'm saying? See, these groups, these agents go around and try to develop the ideologies, you see what I'm saying, or based upon the historical president and totally convoluted, you know, because they want you ignorant to what your historical past is linked to. They want you black and African-American, Black Lives Matter. That's all fine. That's fine. Endorse a T-shirt sell some face masks, put it on it, take a couple protests. It's all corporate sponsored. But once you start doing something individual and you start to practice these, you know, procedures in your own right, you're a problem. Doesn't that tell you that the society in which you live is a very sad reflection that people don't think for themselves? That should tell you the truth. They don't. More people in the society are content with someone else telling them what to do than for them to ever think for themselves. See, this world, this system that you're trapped in, this matrix, doesn't want you to ever think for yourself. It wants to think for you. See, these brothers practice determination. But let's go back five months prior to that. Let's go back to January 6th. Nobody says nothing about that. <laughs> When Duck Dynasty took over the U.S. Capitol, nobody said a motherfucking word. Some shit that's unheard of in American history. But 11 men have a nine-hour standoff with no violence. But January 6th was a fucking Planet of the Apes shitstorm. Do y'all not see this duality we live in? Because I know I'm not the only one. I know that there are some viewers and some subscribers out here that know exactly what I'm saying is very true. See, I practice these legal maneuvers that they shun. I'm free as a bird. I don't have legal problems. I don't have those problems. Yes, I do not pay taxes. I report, but I don't pay taxes. That's the difference. See, they want you to be pre-assumed by the conditioning that you have to understand that these papers that they write are written on a sixth grade reading level. Most of Americans don't go to school, <laughs> nor have they ever excelled to higher education, nor are they autodidactic either. They don't even teach themselves. So they're going to go with whatever they say. That's the problem with today's society of what we deal with here in America. We press more importance on issues of non-importance and we stress less importance of issues that should be important. We walk backwards every day. But I will tell you this, anyone that has practiced anything that I ever said on my channel has never failed and I never got a complaint from nobody. Never. Never. The only people who may have had a problem are the people who have done it wrong. And that was because of the lack of their understanding on a concept that they were very little informed of. People, you should not allow media to distort the image of who you are. This is to all the Moors, it's to all the individuals who practice their birthright. See, it's cool if you tiptoe and tap dance to the constructs idea. You're good. <laughs> You're good. Once you step away from that and you start practicing your natural right, your creator inspired divine right, oh, you are an enemy to the system. They're absolutely correct. Because you are now walking in your birthright and your actual divine right to live in the character of self. There's no such thing as violence in that character because the main supreme thing is do unto others as you have them do unto you. You don't seek to harm anybody. The only thing I wish to do is inform. And if information is harm, then I suggest you just walk away.
You see what I'm saying? See, these constructs in this country were built and developed to extort money from the populace. Labor and equity. That's what it is. You know, all the pseudonyms and all the, you know, fancy, you know, colloquialisms and all of this stuff we ever heard all our lives. Let me tell you something right now. It's not real. And we as cognizant people have to realize that what they've been telling us is a lie. If you want to live in the lie, stop this video right here at 1526 and go back to sleep. Other than that, it is what it is. Straight. People are afraid of self-determination. More people are happy to have labels than to label themselves. Because whether you realize it or not, everything around you has a label. Everything from the cell phone that this is recorded on, all the way down to the mattress you lay on, all the way down to the beverage you eat, all the way down to the, to the laundry detergent you use, all the way down to the car you drive, everything has a label. So everything's labeled, but when I want to label and stylize myself, there's a problem. You have to realize, people, you're not a commodity. You're not to be used for the consumption of others, period. See, all the tangible goods around you could be used for whatever purpose it may serve. But you, naturally, are not a commodity. There was a time in this country where there was chattel slavery. Yes, there was, when the indigenous people of this land were kidnapped and placed on plantations against their will. It is the same way today with the prison industrial complex. There's nothing different. Slavery still exists in this country. So if you are out there listening and you know somebody who might be out there in your family or close acquaintances who wish to want to try some shit out there in the streets, tell them, sit your ass down because slavery still exists. OK, if they don't believe it, don't worry about it. The system will make them a believer when they ass is down the road or up the road, picking corn and taking care of cows. City boy. <laughs> Think it's a joke until you find out. This stuff is existing in this country. Sad part is they want to eliminate that part from the public education system, which in and of itself has never been really truly effective anyway. But, hey, people believe what they want. People, if you are not choosing to actual, uh, actually operate in your own individual capacity, nothing I say or nothing anyone says of any intrinsic value or truth will save you. You know, we are getting ready to head into something that is going to be very disturbing, you know, and I can't say it, but I will say it in my, you know, my figurative sense that we are in the ah scenario, you know, I can't say the word, you know, so I used to say in my other videos, we got the salt hand, <laughs> fucked up situation, but it is what it is. And amongst that chaos, you have to realize that the educational factors. So you remove education, you replace education with fear, and then you replace education with confusion. And what you got? You got a population full of fucking knuckleheads. You feel me? And then not to mention states start to impose certain restrictions on certain things and so forth and so on. And it is what it is. You know, it's just it's the same thing. It's just history repeats itself. It is what it is. The object is people to become more educated, more informed. If you would like to know more about this information, so forth and so on, contact me by email if you haven't already done so. If you have, this does not apply to you. Please, as I say in all my videos, serious inquiries only. I am only a, a human or a man of color, you know, you know, a melanated person who only has a certain time of the operable day. You know, even though time is a construct in and of itself, but the operable day I'm not doing no damn consultation at 3 a.m., okay? Let's get that straight. But within reasonability, it is what it is. Contact me for further information on certain subjects, certain topics, which I will not discuss online because they watch me. <laughs> it's the truth. So with that being said, things I can't say online, you have to contact me via email. Status correction, well, I wouldn't call it that, but more so in the generalistic term, contact me via email. Any other services, contact me via email. Other than that, you want to stay asleep, stay asleep. Agents, fuck you, especially for trying to bring ill reputation on something that actually is truthful. Because 
for you to try to say that something that is a fundamental historical fact that you have in your own congressional libraries, you have hidden from the public. You know what we said is true. How would we have been able to get the reference information if it didn't come from a printed source? But we're lying, though. You know? It's fine. It is what it is. Y'all take care. Stay safe. Peace. Light. Love. Stay tuned. Y'all take care.